But the seasons always go around. They are recurring seasons. And if you walk, you're journeying with God, there are always those recurring seasons. So why we are learning about worship and welfare is that because we have to keep on progressing. Every level there is, Paul says, for every new door the Lord opened for me, I met a new adver- adversary. Every new door, I met a new enemy. This means that every time the Lord lifts you, amen, God is good. Nimchokozi. You know, when you grew up here, we used to... <laughs> There are these houses um, here. I know I forgot what I used to call them in Kileleshwa, the government houses. And we used to like going there when you were kids and take chewing gum and put on the bell. So, I was like, I was no one there. <laughs> and we did that continuously, continuously, continuously. And I get angry in my house. When a child comes and rings that bell three times, I want to eat that child. And I asked myself one time, how did those parents in those houses used to feel to get a chewing gum apple and we run? Then we toy, then we come back again. Then we run. God is good. <laughs> that was a day's job. You know? And you see, this is, you see that, that, that's how, the devil, and he wants to get to you in every single way. He'll always try to find you, discredit your walk with God, discredit your journey. The devil will not stop. Don't think that because you are now in the spirit and you pray, you spend hours in prayer, you know how to wait that you're in heaven. Uko hapa. Hapa. God is good. And this, what we are learning here, why we are using worship, in, worship as an instrument of warfare, it lets you know that the devil will not relent. He has one goal and the goal is to get you. That is his target. He will not stop. And I've said it before, he will use anything around you. Lucifer never plays fair. So don't have in your mind that he put a fairness. At the time I'm going to so what happened next week? Ha, ni sema? Ni leo, ni leo. God is good. At the oh, I'm just from going through a tragedy, now I need a break. For what? Munanzanga ne hapo. He doesn't play fair. Any place he can get to get you, he will get you. If it is through your children, he will go through your children. Through your spouse, he will go through your job, through your finances, through your health. Whatever the devil can touch, he will go for. Why we are learning about worship and warfare is to push you to a place that the devil cannot touch. Menishika, to a place the devil cannot touch. There are seasons of warfare will go through and God will tell you, my daughter, my son, you are going through war and you will have to fight. Na hiyo inanga story ingine, utapigana tu. Mbaka siku munga seme, it is over. Good morning. Am I discouraging or am I giving you hope? Am I just giving information? Can I do that? Okay? So I'm saying this because that every time we come, we are pushing deeper. We are pushing deeper. We are pushing deeper. And I've said this before. If I use the simplest thing, because it's one thing we always pray about so much, is maybe financial breakthrough. I'll use that as, 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 an, as an example. If you're breaking a barrier, let's say you're breaking a barrier, maybe you're doing a business, and you have, you're doing a business, and whatever you're doing in the business, you're making 8,000, 9,000, 10,000 if you. God is good. That is money, right? It is, it is a profit, okay? You had zero at some point. So starting by itself was a battle. Ukaanza. But there's a level there you have to break through. Ili umutu akuja for once and you record your profit for your first hundred thousand. God is good. Unaskia. So if you are told you got your first ten thousand, you don't start, you don't clap and say, I have now overcome generational poverty. It is now finished. Let's be wise. I understand something. A new door is ahead of me. So, Lord, I thank you. And because I know we have conquered this level, I know I cannot go back. But now I know that as I grow, and I keep on growing, not a part of profit in a good 80, 88, 89, in Africa, 97, in a rude 99, in a rude 10. God is good. Again, you understand that, and that what, there's warfare there. You'll find that the season coming afterwards is a season of increase. But every season of increase is preceded by a season of war. Hallelujah. Every season, every season 
of breakthrough, of promotion is always preceded by warfare. What varies is how the warfare is done. That is where it varies. There is a warfare that is done by simply you being in thanksgiving. God is good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Una auctioneer go to thank you, Lord, for the auctioneers. May they have a safe journey with my things. You st- <laughs> because the only way you are winning that war is by being grateful. There is no other way. The Bible says, I'm the Lord, in the Psalms, says that I'm the Lord your God who trains your hands for war. Meaning, he tells you how to fight in that battle. Because the mistake here that happens, and I say this with charismatic Christians, is charismatic Christians always believe that every warfare, ni kukanyaga shitan na kumugonga. There are some spiritual battles that are won in silence. There are battles that I have gone through. God told me, don't tell a soul. And it was difficult. And I'm battling something and I'm in the middle of war and I can't tell anyone. God told me, it's in silence. If you mention it by name, if you call this thing by name, you have armed it. And I have to be quiet. Nana, nana, nana. God is good. African men don't cry. They sweat. So I just sweat. And I'm looking and it's burning in me. It's burning and it's burning. Now the car, at a times even I'm sitting with my wife and she says something and it's in line with that thing and it wants to come out but the Lord says don't call it by name and I keep quiet. Nanyamaza. We are talking in the office and it's building and I feel I can say that thing but if I say it the battle I mean now is I need to keep quiet because if I succeed in silence then I have won that warfare. You see how it is different? Then there are those ones where the Lord will tell you Amuka Angalea shitani kwa macho mambie ulipotea njeo kakuja kwangu kuna hizo kuna za kukarangana not all of them ni Bruce Lee na Jina Jet Lee Mnanishika. Mshona lewalo watu wale Jumaria wakipigana na mapepo town. Na mazali mapanga sao za ambao. Stormally a sight worth to behold. Wengine wambaka na gun. Ya ambao. You've never seen them in town. Mfua nguo za red. Na kumbe pesa wakatae kumpea. Anakutolia sword ya ambao. <laughs> Mambo ya mungu ni mengi. God is good. But I'm saying every time there's another one where he will tell you this will just praise. There's some other warfare he will give you an instruction. There's some battles he'll tell you this one there's nothing else you will do. You know, be still and know that I'm God. The others he'll tell you this one, eh? Hey, uh, the ones he'll tell you this one you don't win any other way. You give an offering. All those are instructions for warfare. There are all ways to win battles. There is never one universal way. Mananishika. There is never one universal way. I'm the Lord your God who trains your hands for war. That's what he says. But the Messiah and charismatic Christians, as long as they have encountered the Holy Spirit a bit, they believe every spirit is to be fought by directly. Zingine, they are all in silence. There are demons in your life, you will beat them because you have ignored them. Mananishika. There are demons in your life, you will beat them because you have ignored them. Kuna sasa zingine utajipata in a financial situation and the word you should never mention at that point is I don't have. And that is when everyone is asking you for money and you have to look for other words for I don't have. God is good. And the enemy is well aware that the battle here is if you concede that you have, that you don't have, the spirit spirit that is fighting you has, has, has come through. Muna muna nishika. Ukipita hapo, unapata ka profit ka ingia ka 100k. Umengia kwa 100,000. You're joking there. Umanda ko swim hapo, zina kuja. Now even that 10,000 used to get kitambo, that you used to get and think it is life. Suddenly now, you're giving out to people. God is good. Life has changed that way now. But there's another barrier now for the million. Hazo na chizia 950, 980, 950, 9. Una chizia tu hapo, tu ni hapo, tu God is good. Muna dance ya hapo, so near yet so far. Again, there's normally a warfare that comes. You discern the warfare, follow the instruction. What is the training for? Is it training I do battle in the spirit? Is it training I keep quiet? Is it training a sacrifice? What is the training involved? What does God want me to do? When I do that, God is good. I break the barrier. I move forward. Munanishika, from glory to to glory. Akemunanichika nicha. Nokomana, we are continuing. Amen. 
That's why we are continuing. So we, that's why we don't stop and say, okay, we have now finished, we have conquered all spirits and we continue. No. Demons outnumber human beings two billion to one. Oh. Stay for this, Okay. God is good. Demons outnumber human beings two billion to one. And that is why we have to stay plugged in all the time. Because you have to get to the place where you are so connected to, to Jesus that you understand the spiritual realm that if the enemy tries anything you are aware, you are equipped and you don't panic. Nanishika. But you know here ananitafuta. Kuna simu zingine ukipigua na walimu shule, unajua hii ni kutafutwa. Wacha ni wacha nafanya kitu kingine kwanza. Wacha ni kule vitu zingine. Let me eat some yogurt. Because you know he na nini mimi na tafutwa. There are things you see and you know this one it's me. God is good. Hakim mnanielewa. That is very important. And at times inaweza kutoa timing. God is good. Na times you have gone to places the school went to do deliverance somewhere. Shule liko inatuaje? Kwa kwenu gashiri kwa kwenu. Kupande ya kwenu kwa kwenu eh. Ntunene girls. Yes. Ni kwa kupande ya kwenu sio? Yes. Karibu na kwa kana gashiri. We went When we got there, we had no place to sleep. Yet they had called us for ministry. Tukapewa matumbo baridi. Lazini sasema ni kwenu, nimesema ni karibu na kwenu. Si kwenu. Okay, ni karibu, ni kwenu. And we were tortured in that school. For those two days we were tortured. The principal who called us suddenly acted like we had been forced on her. And now she's terrorizing us. Program ika change nini? Asita story here before tukazimiwa stima. A to siku Bible imesomwa hivi. Bible kwa maana hivi. Waka 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 zima ta. I preached in darkness. Did deliverance in darkness. God is good. It's don't job with the Holy Spirit. That was a school no student made noise. I preached in darkness and the students were in silence. God is good. But at that point it's easy for me to get angry and say, "Mbona anatutesa hivi? Bila kujua ni nani?" Sema shetani. Hello. God is good. Can we go to the book of Samuel please? Hiyo ni preamble. Nataka ni watayarishe mukiyetu muscle za kesho. Amen. Sawa sawa. First Samuel 22, 1 and 2. David therefore departed from there and escaped to the cave of Abdullam. So when his brothers and all his father's house heard it, they went down there to him. And everyone... Uh, people are suspecting that you are a bit selfish. <laughs> I didn't expect to get stuck here with you. Ume overreact kidogo. David therefore departed from there and escaped to the cave of Abdullam. So when his brothers and all his father's house heard it, they went down there to him. Mm-hmm. And everyone who was in distress, everyone who was in debt, mm-hmm. and everyone who was discontented gathered to him. Mm-hmm. So he became captain over them, and there were about 400 men with him. God is good. It's the cave uh, it's cave Adulam. Oliver msema Ab Ab Abdulam. See Abdul. The, the cave Adulam. The second time he's, he's going here. This is just after um um he's he's having his drama with King Saul eh? and David has fled. And so he fled he went to stay with the Philistines. Then after a while he stayed and fought for the Philistine army. You remember? When he fought for the Philistine army What happened is that at some point the king of the Philistines recognized isn't this the fellow who killed Goliath. So David began acting like a madman. So he fled comes to the cave this particular cave. When he comes to this cave there are 400 people there. And these are we call it um the extra last week the 3D army. Okay? The 3D army because verse 2 says this. It says that all those who are in debt verse 2 will give me verse 2. 
It says those who are in distress, those who are in debt, and those who are discontented. 3D. Distressed and discontented. That is not a place you want to be. And it is a cave. Mononana every single day. What is interesting about the story about these men is that these men end up becoming the mighty men of David. These 400 men became the mighty men of David. The men who stood with David throughout his life, those who fought with him, those who helped him conquer all the territories that he was able to conquer. What made David a mighty warrior and a mighty king was these 400 men. The men you hear about Joab who came from this cave. How does David manage to, confer, to change these people from being people in debt, distressed and discontented to mighty men? 400. I normally say that is the first crusade recorded in the Bible. God is good. That is the first crusade. Because how do you overcome those three things? Last week the someone was how to overcome what? Fear and? Fear and? Distress. Now, to come out of last week, he said that, that the spirit of poverty, fear, and apathy are the three main demons that, that the devil uses. Now, if you look at those three things, you find them here. You find debt, unwana kuna poverty. God is good. Kuna distress hapo. Sansawa. Okay? Distress, you know, um, 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 there, is, there, 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 is, there is distress which covers fear, and they say death in the whole covenant, and there is discontentment. I'm tired now. God is good. I don't want to do anymore. I am now tired. So these men are in a situation where they are all facing each other, and they are looking at David. That David became the captain over them. David is fleeing from Saul. David has run away from the Philistines. But David comes to these men and is able to do deliverance for them and their lives change. I found this very strange. I asked the Lord, how does a team of 400 Gentiles become the mighty men of David, a Jew? And those days it was almost impossible. Good morning. So we're going to look very quickly today at how, what did David do. And we go to Psalm 34. Now, this is the psalm. This is your psalm. This is the sermon that David preaches in the cave. Good morning. Every psalm of David is connected to a time. Okay, so my psalm after time. God is good. Yes, for example, create me a clean heart. Okay, you need to do it. Please read. It says what? I will bless the Lord at all times. Mm -hmm. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Mm -hmm. Verse 2. My soul shall make it my soul shall make its boast in the Lord. Mm -hmm. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Mm -hmm. Oh, magnify the Lord with me mm -hmm. and let us exalt his name together. Mm -hmm. Verse 4. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. We stop there. We start from here. We start from verse 4. We'll go backwards. I sought the Lord. He heard me. I like this part. He delivered me from all of my fears. He's in the cave. David is in the cave. Has he been delivered yet? Has it been delivered yet? At times, when you are trying to overcome distress and fear in your life, you don't, overcome, you, you don't wait for the testimony to testify. God is good. At times, you testify before the testimony. God is good. There are times in your life where you testify before the testimony. Because you have to believe that God will work out something. In this particular context, David has what we called a few weeks ago the definition of faith in the Greek. To understand faith is what? Having a good opinion of God. So David in this context is already having a good opinion of God. He is speaking based on a good opinion of God that he has. That I sought him, he had me, delivered me from all of my fears. Did someone ask week that the enemy will be very keen to understand where your fears are more than you know? Lucifer and Ajua, what you fear most? How about headquarters? 
If you ever find the devil having coffee in your house for breakfast, look at your fears. Your fears invited him. Hello. How do you know he's having coffee? Ah, you always know when he's having coffee in your house. God is good. <laughs> there are signs and wonders. Huh? But you see, you look at it, you, he always understands where your fear is. That is why I have to be deliberate to understand what do I fear most. And I have to be daily deliberate to give it to Jesus. Because that which I fear most, that is always the first place the devil will, 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 will uh, go for. And you get to know what he knows. Do you know you can't fight in faith for what you fear? Good morning. What I'm saying is this. If I have a fear of cancer, and I fear cancer, and I go to the doctor, and the doctor tells me that he has found some things that look like cancerous cells. I once read a story of this guy who was locked in a, in a fridge. Do you remember that story? Have you heard that story before? He was locked in a 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 it's the first story. This book by the first book by Jerusalem was called what? Your, your best left your best life now or something. It's the first story in that book, if I remember. And it was interesting. This guy was locked in a fridge. This big fridge. You know the fridge? Kuba is a strong room. And the guy, in the morning, they found he was dead. And so, when they did an autopsy, he died actually of freezing. His lungs actually froze. But the fridge was not on. The fridge was not on. But his fear was, he will freeze to death. Therefore, he froze himself. Are we communicating? But if actually you fear, and I say this truthfully, if you fear poverty, if you fear poverty, what is If you fear poverty, the enemy knows when he hits your finances, you can't even believe God for provision. Hey, God is good. Are you communicating? Anything you fear about, you will not generate the required belief to fight for it, to believe God for it. Anything you fear, you will not have that capacity. And that is why I say the three most dangerous spirits the devil uses, poverty, fear, and apathy. He knows if he keeps you poor long enough, You'll come to a place you'll have apathy. Mnanishika. He knows if you're fearful enough, you will fear and what you fear will come to pass, then you'll go to apathy. But that which you fear, you cannot pray about it. You cannot. And that is why those of you who are doctors here, how many of you are doctors here? So I'm the only doctor here. Now, when we are doing surgeries, eh? But why is it that we say that? Why is it that doctors are never allowed more often than not ethically to operate on their own family members? Ethically, a doctor can be told to operate on your own mother. At a time, you have to end of the golf. Kwanini? Eh, at a freeze, isn't you? Because there is a fear while he's there. There's a fear at that point, a real fear that she might die in, in my hands. And potentially that can make the doctor make a big mistake. The thing that I'm always afraid of is the thing that, that the devil throws to me. Every time, if I'm afraid of something, that's what he'll bring to me every single day. God is good. In 2015, there's a lady who came to see me, upper, 2016, upper, 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 upper consulate, upper. And this lady literally was ending her marriage because she feared the husband was cheating. And everything she was saying was absolutely crazy. I'm sorry to say. 
kuna ladies wameniangalia vibaya acha niangalie mike mike <laughs> you know but when talked about the most the most said i'm just afraid i'm just afraid i'm just afraid i'm just afraid so she just i'm just afraid so every time he'd come she's like who are you with who are you with you know what and i tell her but did you say no i'm just afraid i'm just afraid i'm just afraid and she kept saying i know i know he'll cheat I'm just... and she kept on saying it and she'd have dreams she'd have nightmares every single thing and the more she the more she pushed him away and i told him the beautiful thing about your fear is that the fear you have will give you something tangible because fear always gives you something to hold god is good fear will always give you something to hold i'm here for you now that is why i have to be delivered every morning you have to be delivered every day night day whatever time to take that fear and put it at the feet of jesus now let's go to the reality but if god forbid that thing which you have feared you put it down and it happens you'll have the strength and the faith to deal with it spiritually as it should be done you can hear the lord's instructions if you have put down lord i don't care about it i've put my health aside i'm not afraid of cancer i put cancer down and i'm putting it where you are and i step aside if i go to the doctor and they say victor you have got cancer i can take a deep breath and say okay thank you i pull back i ask the holy spirit what do we do do I go for treatment? Are you going to heal me? Amani andike will. God is good. And because I've already put the fear down, I am okay with whichever answer God says. I won't fight God. If God says don't do anything, I will sit back. Because I have now come to a place where I may be objective. It doesn't mean that that thing will not happen. It simply means that if that thing happens to happen, you are equipped spiritually to deal with it. But now the devil paralyzes you well in advance. That involves their destiny. Remember, every family has a covenant child and a blessing child. Can I repeat? Every family has a blessing child and a covenant child. Every family has. If you have one child, sana sana, uliza mungu. That child is a covenant child or a blessing child. If you have one child, they can't miss. If you have six children, one is a blessing child, another one is a covenant child, the others are children of God. <laughs> God is good. <laughs> but that's how it happens. Biblically, that's what happens. All through scripture. Because the blessing child, the blessing child carries the family blessing. The covenant child has a different destiny altogether. Esau, blessing child. Jacob, covenant child. Mnanishika? God is good. Hello. Nimeongea speed. Sana. Eh? Ama kidogo. Joseph was the blessing child. Judah was the covenant child. God is good. Mnanipata? The difference. So all things that are happening in every home are balanced the way they are. That's how God works with families. So if the devil understands, if the, the devil himself knows that, I should know more. So I have to be able to, because I, let, me, let me pull out. At times as parents, we fear that our children might have bad lives. Or they might make our own mistakes. And what do they do? They make our, our mistakes. Because we never had the objectivity in prayer to know how to guide them. But instead we feared that they will do what we do. So when they're in the same situation you are 20 years ago, you can't advise them wisely. Because you don't have the skill set. Because your fear is before you. Another vitisho too. Dakata mekona yako hebe. Yomudomo dakata. Unajua kuna kitu nda kukata. Unastuwa nani. God is great. So now communicate up. Anyway, nilikuwa nimeenda kidogo. Turudi kwa line eh. Nimeenda tu kidogo kwa by the way. Nime 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 over kuku mchele. Acha turudi kidogo. So we testify at times we testify of what we believe God will do and we speak of it as a testimony. Sometimes you don't have to wait for the testimony to happen. Now, sana sana, that is your own now, your, your, it's not even a prophecy. 
to see the prophecy, God is good. It is just faith. You are declaring a good thing about God and you are putting it on the Lord to do something good because he is good. Yeah. You know? And my wife Hamoud used to go with rain. Mvoe kinyesha, yosiku imeingia maji. Literally. You know, and, and, and where we stayed was so far from the main road. And the road was flat. And a flat road is bad when it rains. And this is, of course, it's Rongai. So, sana sana, Tamak is not really there. God is good. Yes. Tamak is yakuna. So, mukitembe hapo, kuna kufucha, 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 kufucha. So, when we get to the house, so, <laughs> this is about him. This is what David does. Rule number one, he can promote Hapo in that cave. The first thing he does to disarm this 3D army is the first thing is praise is on his lips. Can I tell you something else? Where there is praise, complaining cannot exist. Who knows a complainer? God is good. Complaining and praising don't go together. You can't praise and complain. God is good. Hakia shikanangi. Now I'm staying with my mom. My mom has been unwell for a long time. And I was sharing with someone in the office this week. One of the funny things that 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 I've la- that I've seen from her that at times uh, uh, challenges me on a, on, a, on, a, on a different frontier is I'm not. I thank God for the health that I have. I'm not where she is in terms of health. If I look at what she is going through, what she has gone through, I'm not where she is in terms of health. I'm going to God for, for my health. But the question I asked myself one time is, if I was as, as unwell as she was, would his praise still be on my lips? God is good. And I told her the other day that this is the part where you, 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 you challenge me and I ask myself questions. Because no matter how bad she, it gets, I have not had her complain one day. She will tell me what is happening. She'll tell me, I'm feeling pain here, I'm feeling pain here, I'm feeling pain here. But God is doing his work in me. And I'd be thrown off. You know? And the times maybe even I'm, I'm now, I want to panic, you know? And the, the moment I used to panic now, I'm panicking, I want to, I, I, I want to react, you know? I'm doing it on the phone and I'm being a scared, I'm telling her, now we do this. I want to send a taxi now, it picks you now. It could be like an airport, you take a flight, you come there, and I'm going to be like, I'm going I started giving a few and I'm pana kwanza, kuna mama wana kuja maumbi up Thursday. Waombe mbaka Sunday. So kutoka niyo wiki ingine. Now woman to the language was you need this person is very unwell. I get confused. And I had to come to a place to adapt. But if I tell her, okay, are you coming? I can't come now. Okay. Because I found that I'm not going through as much pain as she is. But I've never had her complain. Not even a single day. And I asked myself a question. If I, was the, if I felt the way she's feeling, would I still have praise on, on my lips? Nikambia Mungu, thank you for good health. God is good. Because at times we can assume that we know how to praise. But maybe we can wakidogo. No what what you want to complain. How I could do a visuri. You will complain everywhere. Kila mahalu ta complain. Tu ingia kwa banku na complain tu. Hata kwa banku muna nichukia, muna nebe ni pisimame nyuma, na nilikuja mapema. This is man. You can't want to complain. But you see, even in the midst of pain, there's a song by, is it by Hillsong? That it says, even when it hurts, I will praise you. Your praise will continually be on my lips. And you will praise a God you know. You can't declare praise to a God you don't know. You're always declaring praise to a God you know. So meaning I'm always speaking because I know you are God. I know you are there. My situation doesn't nullify your existence. Are you communicating? And if I understand that, then I'll praise you in the storm. And I'll praise you even when the sun shines. It doesn't make a difference. And that is what moves the power of God every time. God is good. And that is why symbolically, 
in the book of uh, in the in the history books of the of the Bible, symbolically, the Lord always said whenever they went for war, the Lord always said what? Judah goes first. And Judah in Hebrew is praise. Whenever they went for war, it was always given. When they go for war, Judah goes first. God is very specific. If God says praise goes first. Praise goes first. My scepter shall never leave praise. My, my power shall never leave where praise is. You understand now? When he says that the scepter shall never leave Judah. That's what he's saying. Jesus shall come from the house of Judah. The house of praise. So it's in praise that his power is expressed. Whenever we praise him, his power is... So I have to have it continuously in my lips. I cannot meditate praising God. God is good. You can't meditate praising God. At many you are meditating the praises of God. At Ukundani, you are clapping and shouting his praises. To quite serious. God is good. To quite serious. It's normally very, it's, it's normally very, very shocking. <clears throat> Sorry. The same at all. I was preaching somewhere. 2017. 2017? Yes, 2017. And I, okay, so I'm going to So, Oh, it was 2013. Yes. 17 is a different story. Oh, 2013. And I remember we were praying and telling people to just get up and declare the goodness of God and clap their hands and all those things. There was a lady seated. I remember the hall was a bit wide. I was like, I'm going to go I'm going So, <laughs> and she was very angry. At why people are talking loudly. So those who are praying, I'm a I'm Not even opening her mouth. The issue was not her sitting. Me had no problem sitting. The issue was how she was looking at me like I had stolen something. So I wondered, no, now you know those days, 2013 to look a bit superstitious. Times of ministry. So Quaroyako another come rebuke. Blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. In case of the worshiper, blood of Jesus. <sighs> Now, what I remember is when we finished, she came to me directly. Akaniambia, Victor, you have to uh, tell your team and yourself, you have to respect how people worship. I said, oh, sorry. Uh, how? I said, no, some of us, we don't believe in these things of shouting, clapping, opening up our mouth. Yeah, we just keep quiet and we just keep quiet here. I told her, okay, fine. There's, there's, there's no problem. You, you do that. Mini kacha. Yeah. Now, that same year, I was called to a kindergarten and I was to give the keynote speech in that kindergarten. So kids were there performing. Who's performing? You must keep talking to a kaongea. Nikona is someone in a quad too real. He must have come manifest the upper. So, who's performing? There is this, this child there on the, on the stage, this small girl. And she did a brilliant, uh, whatever, a brilliant performance. She sang so well, you know. So me, 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 chief guest, me, 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 and so yeah, and people are clapping. And when I turn, I just hear the me. Yeah, I know it was a lot told me to turn. So I turn and I see this lady is there, and she is on her feet cheering this girl. That's her daughter. Woo! And she's cheering and she's clapping and she's cheering her daughter like something else. So I wondered. We we, we worship the Lord in the silence. But we cheer our children boldly. Yes, Abu Haingiani. Nani kamongela na nazile machoza. I know you. Yeah. And you see, and we had an awkward moment, eh? It was a bit awkward. Yeah. That day, like, the government jammed it mahali. But you see, what confused me was that, was that there was no problem. I'm not saying clap, clap on the table. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying, praise on your lips is simple. You don't have to shout. You can be in your house and just say, Lord, you are good to me. You fight for me. You protect me. You cover me. See, if I, no, you don't have to be no boisterous. No, don't cause chaos. 
but let it be on your lips. Sasa just me. Unanishika sasa. Yeah be on on your lips. You know, it comes to a place you're saying yeah, just open your mouth, worship and praise him. Don't have to shout and no microphone ni yangu. Please. I'm not the microphone. Yes, but in your own way you can whisper. Hata siku kuna mask. You just touch your mask. Father my Lord Jesus, yes, Father you are good to me. Me you fight for me. Me I'm grateful. And that is in you, it's on your lips. To God that is enough. Am I I'm making sense now? I'm not saying upande jua meza u shout no 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 no. But I'm just saying you can do it in your house on your way to work in the office. At times even you might be in distress at work something is going wrong. You might not have the energy to go to a closet and start calling fire from heaven. What do you begin to do at that point? Just begin whispering. Unatuma email kwa na email umetumiwa imekutukana na yenye unarudisha inafaa kuwa na anointing. God is good. Yes. No wanza kutaipa unaambia Lord Lord you are good to me. You're always fighting for me. You're always covering me. You're always doing battle for me. You're always covering me. What am I doing? I'm praising him. His praise is continuously on my lips. What happens? They begins to become an of, an automatic manifestation of his power where I am. Mnaona hiyo hiyo nini? It is very simple. Number 2. Tuko number 2. Number 2, the Bible says this. His soul boasted. Would it God verse to Olive? My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. God is good. Kama ulikuwa pioneer kwenu in anything. Ulikuwa kwanza kupata degree, ulikuwa kwanza kwenda university, kwenda form 1, ulikuwa wa kwanza. God is good. Hello. Boasting my soul boasts in the Lord. I, I, I understood it. Even it for me first someone is making seven. Let's read it practically. E, this is something I like to do every time. Read, eh? Moreover, David said, mm-hmm. "The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion, mm-hmm. from the paw of the bear, He will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine." And Saul said to David, "Go, and the Lord will be with you." Boasting in the Lord is always, always, always talking about what God has done for you. Ndio kuringa na Yesu. God is good that I may be in the middle of, a, of, of, of something now. But instead of talking about how things are now, I start telling Mike about what God has done for me. Naambia Mike wacha Mike nikwambie. Eh? Saa hii ni kutaka wacha Mike nikwambie. 2011. God is good. 20 there's a time Mike let me tell you. There's this time like, what am I doing? I'm boasting of the Lord. What God has done for me, I'm giving credit back to Jesus. That's what boasting is. Namrudishia na mwambie Yesu ni yako. Yesu ni yako. Yesu ni yako. I'm not looking at the giant ahead of me. David is on the verge to fight Goliath. He is not telling King Saul that this giant is before us and now you know we have to gather ourselves up. He's telling King Saul the reason why he knows he'll conquer the giant. So if now I'm going through a situation. Let's say I'm battling something. Let me say maybe I, I'm in a huge hole of debt. And I'm feeling as though debt collectors are, ha- are hovering all over me like hawks. Instead of me sitting and declaring about the debt collectors coming and hovering like hawks, I begin to deliver of how God provided for me in the first place to get where I am. What am I doing in that testimony? In that declaration I'm boasting of the power of God in my life. What the power of God has done in my life to this day. So I'm telling someone the reason why I am sure that God will do it again. I am sure he will do it again. But you see if I don't boast then I forget. Every relationship is built upon memory. Every relationship is as strong as the memory it has. Nirudia mara tatu. Every relationship is as strong as its memory. It's as simple as that. There is no relationship on the planet built outside of memory. Hakuna. Anything that happens in a marriage is based on memory. Between parents and children it's based on 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 those on, on those whatever. Um siblings mem- memory. Memory covers every relationship including our relationship with God. In the book of Judges it says and they forgot. And they forgot. 
and they forgot. Yes, while some do this in memory of me. Every relationship is as strong as its memory. When I boast of the Lord, I am refreshing my memory of what he has done. Then now I'm setting up myself for the miracle I want. Tume communicate hapo. Tumenanishika. Mungu ulinitoa hapa na kumbuko ulinitoa hapa. Come on into hapa I remember this. Based on this reason, then you will do the next one. The song by Elevation Worship that says what? I've seen you moving mountains and I believe you can do it again. I've seen you do it before, you will do it again. If you saved me from lions, who is Goliath? You, you get that now? Yes. If you gave me this job, then what is this other one that I'm asking for? Boasting in the Lord is I have to keep on reminding myself daily what God has done. And there's something I'm normally very passionate about and I like telling people about is don't forget God. That's why I'm going to how usibarikiwe usahau usibarikiwe usahau usibarikiwe ufanye nini usahau never forget everything is based on, on memory right now if you ask someone a memory about a parent you will pick something if you take your you'll always pick something based on what you last shared if the last time you spoke to your father multukanana that's the memory you have god is good why do we not talk to people for one year? It's in the memory. It's in, in, it's in you. Yes. Last time we kuona uli uliita panya, sita kuona tena. That's how we don't talk to people. Because the memories are there. God is good. Now I want to build on this point, ili munishike. Because the devil will always work hard to usurp the memory of the goodness of God. How? By an immediate crisis. By an immediate crisis. If God provided for me in 2020, 2021 maybe I'm in a financial situation. Uh, um, situation. 2022 is here. I want to believe God for a financial breakthrough. My immediate memory is the lack of 2021. Cindy. Now, my business is to bypass the lack of 2021 and remind myself of his provision in 2020. Here, I'm boasting in the Lord. So, always think about what has God done for you. I don't think there's anyone in this room who can say, Even though it's one thing, hold on to that thing. God is good. You are telling God, because you did it then, I know this is not a problem for you. I asked myself a question. Which one was the most scary one? The lion, the bear, or Goliath? Which one would you choose to fight among the three? Good morning. No, no, it's tight, eh? Your choice is tight, kidogo. There is no lesser one there. But in his memory, he recalls. He doesn't say, I fought a lion. The Lord delivered me. He's boasting to King Saul about his God. You have to boast about your God. You have to boast. God is good. Number three, my personal favorite, magnify the Lord. Magnify the Lord. As a believer, you either, you either have a microscope or a telescope. Good morning. Hello? Good morning. As a believer, your view about what God can do is either through the eye of a microscope or a telescope. I'm going to read it. Oliver Busoma, 2 Kings, I mean, sorry, 1 Samuel 17, 45 to 47. He said what? I have read from 45. Uh -huh. Then David said to the Philistine, mm -hmm. You come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin. Mm -hmm. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, mm -hmm. the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Um, 46. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines mm -hmm. to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is 
There is a God in Israel. 47. Then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into our hands. This is the most powerful part of everything he has said. Baada ya kustua Goliath with all those words, God is good. He ndi likuwa singinde likuwa parting shot. That everyone gathered here, the congregation gathered here, will know that God doesn't save by sword. Now this is very important in this literature here. Because the first thing that David addresses Goliath with, he addresses Goliath in verse 45 on what Goliath is coming with. You've come with javelin, you've come with sword, you've come with this. Those days, those things are known as powerful weapons of war. Right? What is David doing? He's belittling the weapon the enemy is using against him. Hakim Munishiki Hapo, please. He is taking the weapon the enemy wants to destroy him with. He's showing the enemy what you're coming with is a very small thing. Na kuna kitu mzuri kama kwambie shetani, hiki tunanistwa ni kitu kidogo. You're wasting time with me. God is good. Hello. The time the devil wants to attack kustua, me I'll give you simple examples. When the devil attack kustua about life at he wants at death. Mambanga aki in fact home is heaven. Home is heaven. Twende leo. God is good. Because I understand something. That the sting of death was taken away from him. He no longer has that power. Are you communicating there? So I have to know that the thing the devil wants to bring to me, to bring me down, is the thing that I turn back against him. The devil comes and tells you, by the way, you are single. You'll never get married. God is good. God is good. In fact, Do you know what you are telling me now? You are being fried before you know your soup. God is good. Are, are, we, are we communicating? And this is what at times we get through. That the devil uses something and nakustuanayo. Nakikustuanayo, instead of taking the same thing and letting him know it's a very small thing. That's why I like saying and I pray that the Lord brings us, all of us, even as I continue to grow, that he takes me deeper into his understanding, is allowing myself daily to know that my life is his. That the part of my life I feel I'm still holding on, I release it to God even more. Every day I tell him, allow me to give you more of my life. Because I still know, as much as I think I've given him more, I still think there are parts of my life I still hold on to. God is good. And I want to give it all to Jesus. Anyway. Yes. Lord, even these children were yours anyway. This marriage was yours anyway. This job was yours anyway. Because I've given him everything, it is easier for someone to say those things. But you are not giving him everything. If I've given him I'm in worship, in worship, in worship, I've given my heart in worship, yes. But my marriage is mine. Good morning. Hello. I'm here praying and I'm going deep, but the marriage is mine. God is good. I will do everything. I will sing. I will, but the children are mine. The children are mine. The marriage is mine. The job is mine. The worship is yours, Lord. Na to be shanangi. Muato na jua worship ni serious business. Worship mungwa to joking in a worship. Sa worship ni worship. Simundazima ni tupe uko. Stak sumuliwa. Worship ni serious business. Na uta andriwa na mutu usimame. Ha uta andriwa na mutu unu mkono. That you know. But the children, Lord, belong to me. Lord, it is my finances. Lord, it is my job. And that is where the bridge comes in. Because now I have not given him everything. But I believe I have given him everything. Because of how I feel when I worship. But the health is mine. And it is easy when I'm worshiping and I feel that pain where I was told it is. And Lord, there I am pushing. You can't just take it away. But I can concentrate in this prayer. What am I telling him? 
that the health is mine. It's a condition for us to go deeper. Are we talking? Yeah. But I will go, Lord, I will come, I'll do those things. But easy to zang mungu. He be a sharan yango. yango. Can I tell you the fact? The fact is that we possess more than we let go in worship. We possess more than we let go. And it is easy to have a worship experience and still live having carried the same thing. Haikwe gusa altar. There's a possibility I can pray and this hand never touches the altar. And this hand is where my wife is. And it never touches the altar. But I can be broken here and I'm back and I'm going to go here. Na itoke makamasi but he haijagusa hapa this is mine this one is mine and the devil knows it is mine god is good everyone knows it is mine it can be a project everything else lord i give you but this project is mine and it can slide through worship very simply as i've said David has an understanding here that is very deep. He understands the guys come with javelin na kila kitu. But the way David goes to that battle, I asked God a simple question. There were no small swords. Please reason with me. Ask silly questions when I read the Bible. There were no small swords size here David. They must have been swords his size. Sinio, they must have been a spear his size. But why asked the Lord why does David pick stones? Why does David pick a stone? And I have asked this question to the Lord for three years. Why a stone? Why did he pick a stone? Why couldn't he pick something else? Why a stone? Then he is complaining that these things are too big. But he takes the same sword that Goliath had, carries that sword to cut the head of Goliath. He takes the sword of the giant to cut the giant's head. Kumanisha ile sword alipewa na King Saul was not that heavy. I'm just reasoning. God is good. I ask you the question when I read the Bible. And the Lord took me to verse to, 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 to verse, you got me of verse 47. Yes, the Lord does not save with sword and spear. David eliminates that possibility and he puts himself at the mercy of God. But God didn't save me from the bear because I fought. God saved me from the bear because he is God. God didn't save me from the lion because I know how to fight. So I, if I can go fight against Goliath with absolutely nothing and I'll still win. But I can fight the devil with absolutely nothing and still win as long as I have God on my side. This is why it says that the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into our hands. He doesn't say, I will take your life. The Lord will give you into our hands. That you think you think you are so big, God will put you in my hands. I won't even work for it. The Bible never says that he hit Goliath on the fifth stone. It records our five stones, but never says he hit Goliath on the, with the fifth stone. Haikwa bad nasibu. One. Kuna katuni ni kwa nisha hivyo. Two. And I can be a ten and a rush at a miss three. I love you, you are slow motion. Don't my daughter, this is a lie. This is a lie. Don't hit one shot. <laughs> uh, but, but you see, the battle belongs to God because David has put his life down and he is aware his life belongs to God. Amen. Before all this happens, what is the most significant thing that happens in the life of David before all this? Holy Spirit boldness. He, he was anointed. Good. You know you're asking a biblical question. So there can't be an absolute wrong, wrong answer. Unless on a quote from Quran. <laughs> he has just been anointed. When anointing oil is poured, what does that mean about your life? You've been set apart. Being anointed is to be set apart. The moment David realized 
he has been set apart. He knew that he's living, he's going out, he's coming in, is Jesus. That's what David knew. And he knew, I have been anointed for something. And nothing will stop me from getting there. God is good. With that understanding, I want to finish because I want us to worship. That understanding, with the praise on his lips, boasting about who the Lord is, and magnifying the Lord. In Islam, there's a telescope and a microscope. You can choose to see God to be small, or you can choose to see God to be big. If that is always your choice. How big you see God is your business. Nirudia, how big you see God is? Big God, big miracles. Small God, small miracles. Medium God, yes. How you see God is you. Here in Angam Tumwengine, Haki ni wewe. And that is why no matter anything you hear, you have to go back to what is God's perspective about this. If the doctor said it is impossible, has God said it is impossible? If God has yet said it is impossible, why do I believe you? God is good. So with praise on his lips, boasting about the Lord and magnifying the Lord. And that's why we worship him every time. We lift him. We make him big. David tells something physically bigger than he is. That his God is bigger. He comes ill-equipped and less equipped. And still conquers. God is good. And the fourth thing that David does is he worships. That's what we're going to do. But they were worshipping to set us up just for tomorrow. He says, I sought the Lord and he had me. I sought the Lord and he had me. This is worship. I sought the Lord and he had me and delivered me from all my fears. One of the best things about worship is worship carries away your fears. But, you see, but, unakuja kila kitu meka komeza. God is good. God is good. I want us to worship. And we're going to worship and we're going to give to the Lord again those fears. Amen? Let's put those fears down. Comprehend, Lord, what you're doing, Father. I thank you, Lord, and I bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Give the Lord a clap. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is good. Can you chill for 33 seconds? So tomorrow we meet at 2. So tomorrow we meet at 2. We want to push this worship experience even deeper. Amen. We want to go to a dimension of worship we have not gone to before. So we want to push and go deeper. So, so, so come at 2. Let's start early. I said logistically, it's because that reason will begin at 2. But we come, we start. We just want to have a moment that the Lord transforms us. Every time you worship, God changes you. No, Zuri, he changes you even when you don't feel like he's changing you. He's always doing something. Amen? So we are praying for you. We believe God for you. So tomorrow is a powerful day. I believe God is going to move. Amen? Why I say it's a powerful day is because I'm always sure of one thing. On the bare minimum, on the bare minimum, God will touch us. Amen? On the bare, how he will touch us, I don't know. But on the bare minimum, he will touch us. Amen? On the bare minimum, he will visit us. And after all, the Lord visits us when we worship. Every time, something has to change in your life. And let me tell you one of the best secrets. There are things God, you can be here today. And there are things God can fix in your life today for you're here. And you will realize that impact in 2030. God just doesn't touch your life for a moment. God touches your life for a lifetime. And God understands everything about your life. God corrects your life from very far. Amen? If you look at your own journey, even how you got here, the Lord was working a long time ago. Amen? So don't underestimate any moment you spend in his presence. Every moment is adding up towards something. He's fixing something. And I know by the goodness of God that we are going to testify continuously about his faithfulness. Amen. We will testify. Amen? I know many will stand here and say what God has done. Amen? I'm grateful to God myself as well. I have been not well this week. In fact, today I was worried how I was going to stand and preach. But I thank God. God is good. When I got to learn, I Watch a mic at a preach. 
Amen. Yes. So I'm also grateful to God myself that he has been able to give me the grace to stand and to minister today. I was honestly at some point I was questioning if I was going to do it. I was actually at a place I was thinking I just might not be able to do it. You know, I thought I'd go, maybe sleep, and tomorrow come back with energy. God is good. And the Lord has moved. Amen. So, again, it's always the fact that I always believe that, you know, I'd rather be where God is than anywhere else. Amen. So, we are here in his presence and he's working, he's moving, he's doing wonderful things. Tomorrow, to Kuje, to Barikiwe. Tomorrow, we come and we worship. Amen. We just push. We just push. Hallelujah. Wala wata kwa kwa chuta wambe. You'll be here. Hey, there is a God in heaven. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes. So, so. so I hope to see you all tomorrow. We keep on praying for each other. There is tea and mandazi outside there. So you can have some. Thank you so much for all you do for us. For the support you give this ministry. You are such a blessing to us. And may you be blessed. May you go home safely. Musipate fujo kwenu. Mupate amani. God is good. Sawa sawa. Wale mnaishi peke yenu mupate nyumba iko sawa. God is good. Mustembelewe. Yes, we meet tomorrow at 2. Come with your friends, come with those who you know need the Lord and come with an expectant heart. Amen. On the bare minimum, God will do what? He'll do what? He'll touch you on the bare minimum. That is very powerful. Amen. Situani kesho. Yes. Stories maisha hapo.